Hoa makes smartphone gimbals and recently released a small foldable device called the iSteady X. They're lesser known than companies like DJI and Jion, which is probably why their marketing department is putting a lot of energy into sending them out to YouTubers. In fact, they're so keen to get the word out, they've even sent me one. And here it is. Over the last couple of years, Hoem have established themselves with some solid gimbals that are also a little cheaper than the competition. In this video, I'm going to go through the setup process and walk you through some of the features. Just like smartphones, smartphone gimbals come in a variety of sizes. While some of them are more heavy duty, the Hoem iSteady X belongs in the lightweight category. For that reason, it's an excellent choice for video shooters on the move who don't want to get weighed down with bulky kit. So what do we get in the box? We get the gimbal itself, which feels very light compared to other gimbals I've used. For that reason, it doesn't feel too solid. It has a bit of a plastic feel to it. That's not necessarily a bad thing, as you could carry this around and hardly notice it. Now, this is cool, a little mini tripod. And what's cool is you get one and you don't have to pay extra for it. With the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, you do have to pay a little bit extra. And I honestly don't think you should have to pay $20. Anyway, there's also a wrist strap, a power cable and a storage pouch too. The small booklet has a quick start guide at the front and it tells you that activation is required via the Hoem app and if you don't do this, the gimbal won't work. This seems to be something gimbal makers are doing now. Rather than leaving that as an option, you have to give them your email before you can use your gimbal. So I scan the QR code and navigate to the Play Store. The Hoem iSteady X is a foldable gimbal, so once you've got it out of the box, the first thing you can do is unfold it. The gimbal basically has a simple hinge which allows it to flip open. There's a screw which then needs to be fastened tight to lock the arm in place. On the gimbal handle is a sticker with some quick start instructions, so you can remove that and keep it if you want to refer to it later. Once you've mounted your smartphone into the gimbal grip, you need to adjust its position left to right. If your smartphone leans left or right, slide it in the grip until it's roughly balanced. Note that the grip on this gimbal is nice and wide, so it should be able to handle bigger phones and cases. Next step is to download and install the Hoem app. So I simply used my smartphone's QR scanner, which activates when I aim the camera at something. This takes you to the web page, which provides the Play Store link. Opening the app launches an autoplay quick start video. There's also a list of how to videos available, but you need to register before you can start using your gimbal. So power on the gimbal by long pressing the power button on the right. Open the Hoem app and follow the instructions, giving permissions where needed. You need to make sure Bluetooth is activated on your smartphone. Once you've registered and activated the app, the app should find the gimbal and you can connect by hitting the connect button. At this point, I had a real headache with the gimbal pairing with the app on my smartphone. I registered, activated the gimbal, switched on Bluetooth, connected the device, but the gimbal kept beeping and then switching itself off. So I finally discovered why it was doing this and that's down to these locking mechanisms on each motor. So there are three points where the motors are locked in place on each motor and you need to make sure you unlock these and each motor can move freely because if you don't do this the gimbal will keep switching itself off. But once I unlocked the gimbal arm the gimbal remained powered on and now I was able to connect the app to the gimbal. Note that for the gimbal and app to be connected, the Bluetooth symbol needs to be blue. If it's red, then it's not connected. I turned the gimbal off while I did something else and when I turned it on again, it did not immediately connect. So I had to play around switching Bluetooth off on my smartphone and then on again, then back to the homepage of the app and reconnect. 
It does work, but it needs a little bit of fiddling around. Tap the power button to switch between landscape and portrait mode. If you double tap this button, you can recenter the smartphone in the gimbal. Tap the left shutter button to take a photo or start shooting video. If you double tap this button, you will change from photo mode to video mode. So in other words, if you're in photo mode, one tap will take a picture, but if you're in video mode, one tap will start or stop recording. Using the joystick, you can create smooth tilt and pan movements. With the slider on the side of the handle, you can zoom in and out. Now note, by tapping the F on the screen of the smartphone, you can switch this to focus. So now you can perform nice focus pulls using the slider, which I think is a really small but cool feature because focus pulling can create some really nice shots. Whereas zooming in or out, mm, not so much. So here's a test shot to try out the gimbal. It looks to me as if the gimbal is holding the phone at a slight slant. So I guess I will need to calibrate the gimbal first. Place the gimbal on a desk using the mini tripod. Now power up the gimbal with the phone balanced. Tap the power button quickly five times and the gimbal goes through an auto calibration, which should take about 40 seconds. You can also set this running from the app menu. Unfortunately, the auto calibration didn't really seem to make any difference. As you can see, the phone is still slanted, but hopefully your device will do better than this and I just have a bad one. Anyway, here's what it looks like after I did the auto calibration. Tap this icon on the left to open up two tracking options, face tracking and object tracking. With face tracking switched on, it automatically detects your face and starts tracking. If you want to record yourself, you will need to start recording and then move in front of the camera and get it to start tracking. With object tracking, you must manually select the object to track by drawing a finger over it on your phone screen. The hand icon on the right of the screen should activate gesture control. So make a V sign or a high five sign with your hand and hopefully it will either take a pic or start recording, depending on which mode you're in. Now I'm told this only works for Android at the moment and is in development for iOS. Moment is for when you say, wait a moment while I just fix my home gimbal. Just kidding. It's uh, a little bit like story mode in the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, but rather than editing together four shots, this just gives you one shot with some music on it. So there's like inception, panoramic, time-lapse, dolly zoom, and fantastic rotation. So choose a setting and then click start. Some of them require extra information before you click start again. Then there's a countdown and off you go.
you tap the settings icon cog in the bottom left of the screen, it opens up three new menus and each of these gives you some extra stuff to tinker with. The top icon allows you to change resolution. There's also a professional mode which allows you to manually set things like shutter speed, ISO and white balance. You'll also find the setting for auto calibrating your gimbal if you prefer to do it this way instead of using the power button. And there's other settings that you can uh, adjust the speed of the zoom. Uh, and I presume that also works for the focus if you're gonna use the slider on the side of your gimbal and all sorts of other things, how fast the gimbal reacts and stuff like that. You can also switch to different modes and so you'll find that there. So that's it for this video. Subscribe if you want to receive more videos and uh, maybe hit that bell icon and I'll see you in the next video.